I think there's a couple of things. I think, uh, you know, we complemented each other very well, each, each phase, all three phases. That's the first time that I can remember in a while that all three phases played, played well, and they played with great effort, played what we talked about uh, with the physical uh, nature that we want to have here with the, uh, with the whole team. Uh, two, we still did things that gave us, uh, you know, could have lost if we continue to do some of the things we did. We got to clean those things up. But I, I, I want to put that in, as soon as I can. We're going to talk a little bit about it Wednesday morning. But you know, as soon as we can get by uh, that, I'm going to talk to the players about what we want to do. I mean, they've they've now shown they can win uh, if we do things spe uh, specific ways. If they practice the way they practice. If they rally together like they did yesterday, like they. Uh, you know, they found a way to win. Um, we need that. That needs to come with us as we move forward. How much of DGB's emergence yesterday was just a matter of giving him assignments he could handle and putting him in position to do those and letting him do it? Uh, that was a lot, lot to do with why he had some. Uh, actually, we we pulled back at the end of the week. You know, we we put a load on DGB because we wanted to get him involved, and then. We also recognized we probably overloaded him because of the number of mistakes he was making in practice. So we went back, uh, even as of Friday, and pulled back some things and put him in position to be more successful, which is our jobs as coaches. And, and it turned out to be uh, good. He still has a little, he still has some things he's got to get uh, better at, obviously. But he's he certainly made a took a step forward in, in our opinion. Did, did the communication I guess from from Jason to John to Marcus go about his? It was, yeah. It was. It was uh, the tempo of of the game was going to be important, and again, that has a lot to do with the play calling, but also the players getting in and out of the huddle, and uh, Jason being ahead of the play call based on the situation. And really, we only had one time. We had a, we had to call a timeout. We had a formation error, um, but for the most part. There was not any, you know, we had, we had no penalties. We had, we weren't screaming from the sideline. You got to hurry up. Uh, it was really, I, I was very pleased with the way that thing went. You talked yesterday about uh, Jason. You said you thought he called a, a great game. What were, were there some specific things that you, you really liked about what he called? Him? Well, I, you know, we, a little bit kept him off balance. We, uh, we. Did some things with our bigger, you know, our bigger groups of three tight ends with throwing the ball, uh, getting Marcus out of the pocket. He just mixed it up very well and just had a good rhythm um, with the flow of the play calling. But a lot of it was, you know, I, I, we want to run the ball. He stuck to the run. Well, I'm a cluster ahead of Andrews on the, on the late drive leading up to the field goal where you can use a couple of extra yards. Personnel grouping and Dexter, Dexter has run the ball well for us as well, but um, more of the personnel grouping that we had, trying to see if we could get them into certain uh, personnel groupings defensively. So we did not want to go against base defense. We wanted to see if we could get them to substitute, which gives you different fronts to run the ball and or throw it. What was flashing through your mind as the ball was sailing through the air to the sun up? Uh, I've seen it's about four weeks now we've had to play in, and it looked exactly like it looked in practice. So, you know, that <clears throat> I've seen that ball sailing in the air to Fasano. I just happened to be the head coach of the Jaguars when that ball went to him with the Dolphins. <laughs> so it was the exact same play. I actually brought him in because I pulled that play up, and I, I wanted to put that play in. Uh, this is about a month ago, so I have seen it, and it was not a good feeling then, but it was a great feeling yesterday to be on the good, on the, the winning edge. So that play just was just brought in like a month ago, you said. Uh, we've had it in for a number of games, but uh, we ran it. We ran it uh, Friday, and I told Jason, I said, if we get the we get the ball on the five yard line, that's a touchdown. Yeah, I just I uh, I, I really reinforced what I had said to them Wednesday morning about. A lot of us have had some frustrations, and uh, this is a great opponent to, to take them out on. And uh, let's play to the, le to the level we think we're capable of playing, and do the things we've, we've talked about. And let's just see what happens. That you know, if we do, we have a chance to win.
What's that run number? It was 28 right about in the ballpark that you were talking about the number of carries you wanted to see in the game? Oh, I'd say, yeah, 25 to 30. Your thoughts on Andrew's performance and also the importance? It seems like you, you want to have a, a number one guy back there. Well, I thought his performance was good. Uh, he made some yards. I mean, really, uh, not just running it, but some of the runs after catches. He, he did a, a good job with that. But uh, there were some times there on some short yardage plays that I thought we should have made it. And he's got to understand that there's, there's, no, there's no room for stopping the feet. I mean, if there's no hole there, we've talked about it. You've got to make a hole. And uh, he's, he's got to do that. And we had a couple chances to do that with him. And, uh, you know, again, he's a young player. There, there's a, there were a lot of guys there yesterday, him and uh, BW, and uh, I'm trying to figure out all the guys at Looney. I mean, all these guys that were productive for us, um, you know, I thought were, they, they had a big role in this game. And, uh, but Antonio will learn as we go to uh, hit a little better. I mean, it's been forced, reinforced. Can you talk about the play of Blackson and Jones? They seem particularly disrupted along the defensive front. Yesterday. They're playing better and better uh, each week. But uh, probably uh, Daquan's best game. Really, really, I'll say this, probably both of their best games. I thought our D-line really played well. Uh, really were disciplined in the run game. Talked about gap control. They did it. Um, they were patient. You know, it, it can be very frustrating, and you can ask the Saints the same question, that you can't get to the quarterback because the ball's coming out so quick every single time. And you, you get frustrated, and at some point, you're gonna, it's not going to be that important to keep rushing because you know you're not going to get there. And as soon as you do that, you're going to sit back there and launch it. At no point did they ever not keep coming. They just kept coming. Even regardless of the score, they were, uh, they were relentless. When Paris Cox goes out, is BW, I mean, does, does, does he limit what Ray and Dick can, can call? Because I assume he doesn't know everything at this point, does he? Or, or how to he knows a good portion of it, yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah, they, the practice squad guys, they have to prepare like they're going to play in the game. I mean, that's, there's, <clears throat> and, and they know that. Okay, I, on, uh, on Friday, I, I took all their notes, okay? I took all the practice squad guys' notes, and I made them make a copy because I wanted to see how well prepared they were for this game even though they know they're probably not going to play. That's all of them. And I was very pleased with the attention to detail that these guys had. Because most times, the first time I call for those notes, they're not real good. The second time, they're really good. <laughs> but I was very impressed with our guys. I mean, all the way down the old linemen. I mean, they were prepared to play, and that's what we need. That's the kind of group we have. But BW was ready to play. I mean, that was a big play for us to have that interception. The team rallies around that. They like to see guys get a chance. They do. And they like, they like to see guys that work hard in practice actually get rewarded and brought up and, and then have some success. I mean, he, he was good for us on special team. He did a lot of things for us yesterday. And, uh, never seen a guy get uh, two one sportsman like calls on, on one play. And, and what were your thoughts on, on that situation? I, I really wasn't sure what they were. I, I, I called. Uh, Dean Blandino this morning, just because I wasn't sure how how could that happen, but, but I guess uh, Arakpo just didn't stop. You know, he just didn't stop, and so um, it was for the same. You know, it wasn't he didn't touch any of the officials. Obviously, he would have been ejected, but he just verbally would not stop. Was it the same official or was it different? Same official. Yes. It, it was there. How close to an ejection does that get? I, I know if you if you touch an official, that's an ejection. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like how many can they do? How many times can they? I don't know. That's the first for me. I'd never seen a guy get two. When you went back and looked at the film, did you have any issue with any of the three roughings that were that were called? We we talked about. I, I talked to Dean about it. Um, it's it's such a judgmental call at the time, and they're not going to change anything. But. Uh, I feel satisfied that I got my point across with Dean, and, and uh, um, there's some other things I got clarified. I wanted to. I, I told him I need to have some answers when players or coaches come to me of how are we going to coach this, and I, I got that. I got clarification from him. When did the come up? Uh, Cobb does come up this week, and maybe be curious to, to get. Well, we have to make that decision. I think 
I have not talked to Rustin about it as of today, but I think we have till the 12th to make that decision. And uh, the, one, the one thing that Cobb did last week, he took a lot of the carries in the scout team. We need to get him some carries with the offense so he gets you know a good feel for the deal line and, and give him a little more of a workload. But we'll see where he is and who, it, who he takes carries from. I don't know at that point, at this point right now. With all the youth on offense that you mentioned, how much maybe does it provide a boost seeing what Marcus did yesterday? Obviously, he was taken at number two because thought he could do these kind of things. But what can it do now that he's coming off the injury with that kind of production? Well, the good thing was that uh, he was moving around much better than we even anticipated. Uh, we kind of limited what we did with him because of that. But to see what he did, some of those plays that he made uh, out of the pocket, not just design ones, but some that he scrambled, the one to Dexter down there to, uh, to get us in position to score, there's, there's more we can do now of knowing that we've seen it live. And, and, uh, and it's a boost. I mean, our, our players, obviously, they know it's, the ball's going to be on them. And they, they know it's going to be only where they can catch it. Now they got to just make the plays, and they did yesterday for the most part. Was that your top two-point conversion play for the week, or does it depend for the week. on how they've been playing? What, what was it about that play? Obviously, that was crucial that you knew you could get in on that. Well, we, we saw them get beat on the same play uh, twice, not not on two-point plays, but on for touchdowns. And uh, we thought, well, let's see if they fix the problem. And they actually played it differently. But Marcus put it to Delaney, where only Delaney could catch it. And you know, no matter how well you're covered, if you got a guy that can throw it that accurate, and you got a guy that you trust to catch it, odds are you're you're good. So we we went back to something we saw earlier against them. In terms of the rest of the, in terms of the rest of the season, Mike, how uh, how bouncy of a springboard can one win be? I think it gives you some confidence. Uh, it does, it's got to give you confidence, I man. Um, I'd be shocked if they don't come in here Wednesday ready to really work. Um, but I think it is, it's, it's just given them some proof that if we play well in all three phases, we have a chance to be pretty good. We really do. you get a sense of, of whether your corners are three injured guys from yesterday, whether you got a shot at them this week? Or... Uh, we're, hoping, we're hoping to get hopefully one of them back. But uh, again, that's it's being Monday. That'll be something we'll talk about as we move on along the week. You did with, with, I guess you've done with Morris Gonzalez since he's been here, but you probably worked more closely with him yesterday than you had at any point, I guess, in-game. Impressed with his poise and just how he handles himself as a, as a rookie? Yeah, he's he's pretty, I mean, he's about as level as I've been around. Uh, nothing, nothing really disturbs him. I mean, nothing. Um, but it, there is a competitive fire in him that I know is there that, uh, we have a chance, no matter what the score, no matter what the time is in the game, we have a chance for this guy. Did you see some emotion from him after the, after the win yesterday? He smiled. Yeah, he did. He, <laughs> <laughs> he did. He, he was, uh, yeah, there was a lot of smiling faces in there. Um, but he was one of them. Was, the, was Derek Morgan battling through? Injury yesterday looked like he was kind of in Yeah, he, he got dinged in the shoulder. Uh, we tried to tape it up or, or put a pad on it, and the pad probably aggravated it more than it did. So he came over, took that off, and just played through it. I mean, it was an impressive performance by him. Any chance he's going to miss anything? I don't think so. I think he's going to be OK. Um, Delaney right now, Delaney, we had him on the list last week with a knee. His knee's fine. Um, um, Kendall's out probably tomorrow. He's he's progressing quicker than we thought. I don't know about the game yet, but he is better. Um, Dexter has a mild ankle sprain. He's probably going to be out tomorrow. Don't don't even know when it happened. Came in today uh, and complained about it. So it's, it's really not that serious. And then Morgan, we already talked about. Um, Bleedy, we're hoping is able to practice this week. Um, Jason McCourty is, uh, he'll probably be out tomorrow. We're still getting some second looks at him with the groin. And then Parrish, uh, he's day to day. Just, it was just, a, I think it was preventative more than anything yesterday. Just felt like it was not stable and didn't want to push it. Are you concerned that McCourty might have to have another surgery? Because you said it the other day it was related to the injury he had in the uh, they're still, They're doing second opinions and giving him the, best medical advice they can give them, so.
You say tomorrow they have a workout tomorrow and you can talk I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. The current is okay. You just get, you just get hit on the punt. You know, he did. Uh, yeah, he's fine. He's not even on the injury report. Anything else? Thanks. Appreciate Thanks, it, Mike. Okay.